y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Marissa Ray thank you for tuning in today hope you're doing lovely and wonderful and having a great day so as y'all saw by the title I'm gonna be showing y'all how I achieved my knotless box braids with the curly ends honey it looks super adorbs um, I love how they turned out so most importantly we have to start off with the hair and the hair that you're going to need so what i used was this zuri 100 percent kankalon braiding hair kankalon kankalon however you say it and this is in the color two i got this from my local beauty supply only for like a dollar 99 and i used five packs of this in the color two and then I also have this free tress braid, the Cozy Deep Curl right there, and also in the color two. Got this from my local beauty supply as well, um, just like that. I only used literally probably half of this because I also cut the hair in half. It's 22 inches, but I cut this in half because it's only on the ends and I knew I wouldn't need that much. So only one pack of this and five packs of this hair I did not cut this hair in half by the way okay so another product I use to achieve these braids and make them look all nice and sleek is this shining jam also got this from the beauty supply this was $5.99 I think for um, an 8 ounce jar oh by the way the free tress hair I think that was like $5.99 or $4.99 $6.99 one of those um, very inexpensive though now to achieve your braids you're gonna need a couple of things some tools right you are going to need some type of braiding rack or if you want just use like the back of your chair to put hair on top of because with knotless braids you have to use um, just like small pieces at a time and you feed in the hair as if you were going to do a feed in braid so this helps with separating out the hair that way I don't have to go back and forth with separating hair as I'm braiding then you're also going to need one of these combs with the skinny rat tail at the end you are going to need a pair of scissors and also a few little hair clips because I do not know how to knot the ends of my hair where the curly hair stops I used nail glue so this is the kiss nail glue I got this from Amazon and I also got the braiding or threading rack from Amazon as well so in order to do my braids I already had pre prepared my hair oh yeah I prepared my hair I prepared my hair I prepped my hair that's what I was looking for um, and I'll leave that video down below in the description box so now that's pretty much all the products that you're gonna need one thing I almost forgot to mention y'all the time it took me to do these braids so I pre parted my hair the night before and it took me honestly like two hours or so to pre part my hair just in rows first so the installation part took me the whole entire day because I'm not a fast braider honestly so it took me probably about 16 to 17 hours that's also with stops included breaks eating talking watching TV you know I did have a little bit of break time throughout that whole 17 hour time but yes it took me a long time so if you would like to see how I achieved my super cute knotless box braids then just keep watching so I'm going to show y'all first how I pre-parted my hair. I pre-parted it into five sections on the right side of my head and five sections on the left side just in the front. So I have 10 sections or 10 rows in the front total. Then in the back I just parted it into six rows because the back I don't mind if it's like a little bit bigger you know because that's usually the trial and error area. <laughs> so yeah six rows in the back 10 rows in the front. So here I just wanted to show y'all how the hair looks. This is not pre-stretched hair so I have to stretch it on my own because it's super blunt at first. So I'm literally just going to take small pieces of the hair from one end of it out of the package and just start pulling it up so that it all becomes uneven and basically gives the illusion that the hair was pre-stretched but I just stretched it myself. 
Then I'm going to just take the wide tooth comb and comb out the hair. It's going to be super tangled and you're going to probably lose a lot of hair or a little bit of hair, whatever. But you just want to comb it all out so that it's going to be easy for when you separate the hair for braiding. Okay, so after parting my hair, as y'all just saw in the last clip, I started on my hair yesterday and I did all the rest of these braids. And then this morning, I just wanted to come on here and show y'all how I'm going to do the last two braids that I have left. So I have this last little batch of braiding hair and I also have a little threading rack. So for each braid, I'm putting three pieces of hair. It just depends on how thick I want the braid to be. Like around my edges, they're kind of a bit, kind of smaller. I take pieces that are relatively small and thin because I like to add in about three pieces so here's like one piece and how thick that is and I'm gonna just put it on my um, on my thread rack over here have two braids left so I'm gonna take um, two pieces of my curly free tress hair and the little curl at the end I use a very tiny piece not much at all see how thin that is very tiny piece and that'll be just for one braid so I'm gonna take my rat tail comb and I'm gonna just part like evenly across where the other part is symmetrical on this side After the initial part, take the shining gem and put it on my finger here. I'm going to just smooth that across the part. And I'm going to go in and part it again so that um, my part can be super crisp and even. Now the shining gem is your best friend, so I'm going to use that all around the part and apply some of the shining gem also to the ends of my hair because when I'm braiding I want the ends of my hair to you know mix in with the braids well so to start off the braid you start off with like a normal plait so you got three pieces of the braiding of your hair three pieces one two three I'm going under with my right hand first and picking up that left piece that was two hand motions three hand motions four hand motions and you want to make sure it's tight okay as tight as you can braid it now I'm going to take my braiding hair one piece and put it in between my on my pointer and thumb finger and I'm placing it in between my pointer and thumb finger on the left pick up the top piece of my hair right here on the top that's laying on the top and the bottom piece of the cankalon hair and continue braiding while holding that base so you want to keep braiding that was one hand motion that was two hand motions then I'm gonna go right again and left again okay so I did four hand motions right left right left and now I'm back in the same spot so I'm gonna pick up after four hand motions pick up another piece of hair put it in between my pointer and thumb finger pick up the top piece of hair and pick up the bottom piece of the canker line here and continue braiding right hand first then left hand that was two and always hold this little base part right here so it looks smooth one more right hand first and left hand boom okay so it's smooth now we've got one more strand of hair that's a little bit thin so I'm adding in <clears throat> my third piece of hair put it around my pointer and thumb finger like so place it in between my thumb and pointer finger pick up the top piece of my hair 
and the bottom piece that was hanging closer to the bottom of the canker line here which is closer to the right and continue braiding and again hold that base so that the braid looks as tight and neat as it can and I'm not going to add any more hair at this time so I'm just going to keep braiding all the way down until I get to the point where I need to add in more hair and you want to continue to add your shining jam all throughout the braiding process like literally especially once you get to the ends of your hair so I might have just mention this for some braids I like to add in a piece of another piece of the canker line hair in here just to um, make it thicker but I don't think that's going to be necessary on this braid I like the size of it so I'm just going to continue braiding for now so once I start getting up kind of close to the end because these are pretty long they come down to um, like my thigh basically hip thigh hip area some are longer than others as y'all can see but they do come about down to my thigh hip area so once I kind of start to get there, I like to pull out my other braids and compare where I'm going to start the curly hair at the ends. I'm going to go ahead and add in that piece of curly hair. So let me zoom in. To add in the curly hair, I take the little piece the same way, put it in between my thumb and pointer finger and also in between my thumb and pointer finger like so okay then I'm gonna take the top piece of the hair that was already there and the bottom piece of the curly hair that's there and continue braiding like so so I'm gonna have to pull it a little bit <laughs> So then it should be super smooth and seamless to where you cannot tell where I added in the hair. And this comes with practice, y'all. See, look at that. That looks good. So comparing it to the other braids where the curly hair is, that should be good enough right here. Okay, so while that's like that, I'm going to take this nail glue, this kiss nail glue and I'm going to place the nail glue on where I want the curly hair to basically start or end so I'm going to place it here and be careful with this nail glue y'all because <clears throat> if you touch it too much see there first of all your hand gets stuck to it right see how my hand is sticking um but also it can turn white and I don't want it to turn white so then I'm going to flip the braid to the other side and just put, like literally just surround the whole entire um, end of the braid with nail glue. The kink line here is still at the end, so what I'm going to do is cut that off. So I'm going to separate those pieces. Got my scissors here, and I'm just literally going to cut that piece off. Just cut it. And cut off the rest of that as much as I can. I'm going to go back in with the glue just to kind of seal the ends of that. And there we go. We have our finished braid with my curls. Okay. And just look at the entire braid, y'all. You cannot tell where I added in hair. In the entire braid. I'm going to go ahead and do my final braid. And I'm not going to talk through this one unless I feel like there was something I missed.
Now for this one, I haven't added a third piece in yet. So again, I'm just going to pay attention to the thickness of it and see if like once I get towards the end of my hair, if I want to add in um, a third piece. actually did this after I finished each braid because at the end I didn't want to just be going back over through every single braid so what I do is all those little kind of um, flyaways there's not many on this one which is good but sometimes there are the little flyaways so I'm gonna just clip those off as much as I can The last thing I'm going to do just for now is use some of this styling foam mousse by Cream of Nature and just put that all on my uh, roots of my hair. Okay y'all my camera finna die, I'm trying to hurry up and put this scarf on. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do, just put this scarf on, leave it on for a little bit. y'all thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was super helpful and informative for you on how to do your protective styles and your knotless braids so leave me a comment down below if you would like for me to try any other braid styles and some techniques on how to braid faster because again i'm not a fast braider so everything i mentioned will be down below in the description box don't worry about that i got you I got you, boo. So with all that being said, thanks again. Sending my prayers and love out to everyone and everything that's going on right now. Keep your heads up. Stay prayerful. I love y'all and catch me in my next video.